Few body organs are as complex and delicate as the human brain. That's why science is increasingly committed to unraveling its mysteries. Up to the 1950s, the adult brain was thought to be hardwired with fixed and immutable neuronal circuits. The discoveries made so far as to how the brain grows and develops are surprising and astounding. Current research shows that the brain is plastic and dynamic, and that its development can be traced not only to the neurological substrate, but also to the quantity and quality of stimuli resulting from functional demand. This plastic property of the central nervous system is referred to as neuroplasticity, the underlying structural changes brought about in response to a wide range of experiences. Each new learning experience forces the brain to reorganize itself, forming new connections. These new experiences become embedded in the memory of the individual. Image quality depends both on the input received through the eye and on the processing that takes place in the visual cortex. Based on this new concept of neuroplasticity, a new treatment was devised, visual perceptual learning. It relies on visual stimulation and the improvement of neural connections responsible for vision. The software package we used was Neurovision Correction Technology. Neurovision uses an internet-based, computer-generated visual training exercise regimen using sets of patient-specific stimuli based on Gabor patches to sharpen contrast sensitivity and visual acuity, as described by Polet and Saji. The science behind Neurovision is one of neuroadaptation, which promotes special interaction between specific neurons. Neurovision was approved by the FDA in 2001 for the treatment of amblyopia, till then deemed irreversible. Clinical trials have since been underway for cases of myopia, presbyopia, and post-refractive surgery. Improvement in visual function and permanent results have led us to broaden its use to patients with post-cataract surgery with multifocal IOL, RESTRO plus 4, post-intrastromal corneal rings, and retinal degeneration. The equipment used in measuring visual acuity and contrast sensitivity was the Optec 6500. Studies have shown that patients with RESTRO plus 4 implants report good, uncorrected, far and near visual acuity. However, improvement in intermediate vision did not meet expectation in some cases, and there was a reduction in contrast sensitivity. So, we decided to use neurovision correction technology in five patients with RESTRO plus 4 IOL implant. They underwent a total of 20 sessions in a five-week period. Uncorrected visual acuity improved from 2025 minus 2 to 2020, while intermediate visual acuity went from 2040 to 2030. Contrast sensitivity after treatment was within the normal range. Patients also reported decreased glare and improved night vision. Patients were quite pleased at the end of the treatment. Patients with keratoconus who have intrastromal implants usually complain of impaired night vision and glare, in spite of improved best corrected visual acuity. After neurovision, best corrected visual acuity went from 2030 minus 2 to 2025. Look at the remarkable improvement in quality of vision. On examining a patient with pigmentary retinosis, 
we noted that best corrected visual acuity in photopic conditions was 2030 and in mesopic conditions 2050. Thus, confirming the difficulty these patients have in seeing at night. After 23 sessions, visual acuity in mesopic conditions improved from 2050 to 2025. Greater contrast sensitivity and improved night vision made activities such as driving and strolling at night a lot safer. The results obtained so far have been encouraging. Mean visual acuity, contrast sensitivity, and main functional outcome have all improved significantly for the cases we assessed. Further studies with larger samples and longer follow-up periods are necessary to replicate the results obtained. The breakthrough aspect of visual perceptual learning was the fact that visual complaints requiring complex resolution were minimized through the creation of new connections and as yet uncharted pathways within the visual cortex. This promising new technique represents a conceptual shift in the approach to several eye diseases. Today, the key to improving visual function lies in our addressing the brain as well as the eye. One further step in mankind's continuous quest to a better life. <laughs>